news out everywhere the cast has released and it's time we look deeply in and power rank these house gets 1 through 16 it is finally time for big brother season to start that's right welcome on in this is josh does movies and for the next two and a half months it's going to be Josh Does Big Brother as well. As Big Brother 26 is starting out, there's going to be a lot of things if you want to like and subscribe to the channel you can find here, including every Tuesday morning, 10 a.m. Eastern Time, the power ranking starting with this episode today, um, weekly um, episodes breaking down everything that's going on in the house on Fridays at 10 a.m. Eastern Time, daily at least once, if not twice a day, update about live feed updates, which, given that we don't have a rewind function, I will do my best to be as truthful and honest as possible with those updates. And finally, live stream watch-alongs, which will start Thursday night this week when they come into place at 10 p.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I will be here live streaming the initial reactions to the live feeds this Thursday night. And well, here we are. The cast is here, and for the initial Week Zero Power Rankings, I am going to be going through all 16 house guests and ranking them from who I think is going to be the first boot to who I think is my winner pick for the season. Now, a few disclaimers. Where I place people in power rankings is not me publicly supporting them as good people or their ideas and thoughts and where they end up with these interviews or their social media. It's just based off of the video um, questioning that I saw on Mike Bloom's channel and other places of, of how I think they handle those questions and how I think they're going to fit in the house overall. Um, I may have people that I'm going to cheer for rank lower than what I'm, you know, in my power rankings because it's about power ranking. It's not about who I like as a favorite. But without further ado, let's start this off with number 16, and it's going to be Kenny. Kenny, to me, has the main issue of he looks, talks, breathes, sits like a cop. And in Big Brother, even him being older and maybe some of the younger people saying they want to work with older individuals, I think the cop narrative for reality TV has spun that you're not going to trust them very much and they may be getting out early. And while some people like Derek have been able to kind of hide that he's a cop very well, Kenny's not going to be able to. And, and the way he was talking and his ideas and how he was going to you know, manipulate and lie about being a cop in the house, we'll see if he goes through with that. But if that's the case, I think Kenny is a very good chance at being a first boot, a first easy boot overall that everybody will be happy sending home. I wasn't too impressed overall with his interview questions. And like I said, he definitely, to me, I think is just going to come off as very just... We're not going to want him in the house long term. He won't even have to say he's an undercover cop. He just has that cop look. And I think cops in a game like Big Brother are people you want to get rid of early because if they go, if they're able to get in there longer, as we've seen with Big Brother Survivor, they have a pretty high success rate at winning these shows. 15, Brooklyn. Brooklyn has a lot of issues for a lot of different reasons. Her connections to a BB15 house guest named Aaron is very questionable, and you wonder how this person gets on the cast, but we'll see what Brooklyn is like on the live feeds. Her questioning, though, I thought was very weird. The overemphasis on being the first, you know, married mother winner, and kind of the other answers that she gave. She gave me very early, you know, try to control things you know, first or second boot energy. I think she's going to cause drama. I don't think she's going to mesh perfectly well with this cast. And I see Brooklyn here as being one of the first few boots of the season. Again, the interview she was giving and the questions she was giving out kind of were a little bit lost. Maybe there's an idea of like creating a showmance and using them as a shield. That could always be an option, but I don't know if this cast is going to be big showmance heavy. We'll see. But I, I did not get good vibes from Brooklyn, and she appears to me to be somebody who's going to try playing a little too hard early, and I see as an early boot early on, um, just off the bat. Next up, I actually have Kimo as my number 14th power ranker. I want Kimo to go far. I love the energy. I love the Aloha energy. His interviews were full of passion and emotion, and I like that. But that's why I have him at number 14 here. I think he's somebody that is going to have a little bit too high stress, high stress emotion. And I think that's going to wear thin on this cast here, who seems pretty more chilled and laid back pretty quickly. 
Um, maybe if he gets in there well and he finds a good base, he can make it far. But I worry that he's going to end up becoming too paranoid. He's going to be giving us the messy feeds. And honestly, I see him being an easy boot target early if his emotions get the better of him. And just based off the interviews we had here, he was a little bit too high energy in some ways. That gives me much confidence, ranking him much higher overall in this season. So I have him at number 14. Number 13 overall, this is another person I didn't get too much great energy out of. It's going to be Lisa, um, the celebrity chef. She doesn't seem like she knows Big Brother very well. Maybe the cooking angle will keep her in the house a little bit longer. But I could see her getting a little bit lost, maybe missing out on alliances, and being an easy boot here around this first few weeks. Um, I wasn't too impressed with her interview questions. And again, she might become a Bowie Jane type character for last season, so she might be able to make it far. But as far as power ranking win equity, I would be very surprised to see um, Lisa have any chance at winning this game, even if she does make it far. Much like Bowie Jane didn't have much of a chance to win this game last year, despite making it all the way to finale night. Number 12. Oh boy, this person to me is such an interesting character and I want him to succeed and be as lively as he wants, you know, is giving us his idea wise. But I'm going with Joseph here. Between the stash, being a video store clerk in 2024, and so many of the answers that Joseph gave, Dan Geesling wanting to be kind of the manipulative type person, I see Joseph kind of having a step back and maybe trying to play too hard early on and getting himself caught and getting himself into an easy mid-game boot area right around the start of Jury. I think if he gets into good alliances, he could be powerful, but I don't know if he's going to be able to work any type of charm and way off the block once he tries a little bit too hard like we've seen other people like a Dan Geetzling who he says he wants to model his game after do. Again, I love Joseph. I love the stash. I love his whole persona. I hope he goes for it because I think he could be a very interesting, great p player. But he's going to be my number 12 ranked overall, which brings me to my number 11. And I'm sorry, it's going to be Leia. Leia coming, you know, originally from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, is one of my two rootable people off the bat just from where they came from until they do something that I don't like, you know, questionably moral wise. Um... She's a cocktail waitress, VIP cocktail waitress from Miami, and this generally has a good track record of succeeding in Big Brother with people like Janelle, Rachel Riley, Porsche. But her answers to questions were very flim-floppy. I don't know if she understands what she's going into and what this game's going to be like. We'll see how quickly she picks it up off her feet. But her saying, like, oh, my mom and sister watched it a lot, but I never had a chance. It sounds like she wasn't very interested in this show when she got kind of recruited and found out that family members maybe enjoyed the show overall. I don't think she has much win equity to start. That's why she's all the way down at number 11 for me. But as the season goes on, she may climb up higher and move herself into the top 10 because I think she's somebody who's going to stay around and I do think she has a chance of having a showman with somebody maybe uh, Matt or a Cedric um, Cam as well one of the guys she could be a showman's partner for somebody we'll see but I don't have high hopes off the bat for Leia number 10 is going to be Angela I have Angela, the highest ranked older individual, mainly because I've loved her answers to a lot of these questions. I think she's going to be undoubtedly the mom of the house, and I think she knows that Willow is going to come in and she's going to welcome it. I think she's going to be very much like a Felicia, where people are going to come and be around her, Felicia and Sri, and I think she's going to make a very long play in this game. What's holding me back, ranking her, ranking her higher than 10, is the fact that Big Brother is so comp-heavy towards the middle and late game and I don't know if anybody's going to take her to the final two because I think they're going to see her as this lovable mom feature who's just going to win a final two jury vote. That's why I have her at 10, but I think Angela is a quiet under, you know, underdog type player in this game. And if she came out somehow on top, I would love it. And I think she's going to be a very good player in this house. And I wouldn't be surprised to see her leading a couple alliances out here off out of the gate and being a power player much like Suri was in Big Brother 25. This brings me to number nine overall, and that's going to be Cedric. Cedric is the second person I'm connected to geographically wise. I grew up near Pittsburgh, so I'm rooting for Leah because she grew up near Pittsburgh. I live in Boise now, and that's where Cedric lives in, so 
the ex-Marine 21-year-old, I am going to root for as long as he doesn't show the negative sides that sometimes the Idaho-Boise area shows. And I don't think he will, just looking at his profiles and stuff like that. I think Cedric has some of the right mindset in the game. He reminds me of a less game bodier version of Corey of last year. But I do think his high-strung 21-year-old energy and just his immaturity as an individual of that age, which, again, is not like a negative towards Cedric as a person, but what generally comes in these games with people of that age, it's very rough for somebody that young to succeed as well in the house like a house like this. I have him at number nine because I think at some point in the middle of the season, he's going to be somebody who gets cut off. He's going to be a little too rash. He'll make his move too quick, kind of like a Corey Wurtenberger in season 25. And I think he isn't going to be able to make it to the end. But I'm all in with Cedric and Leia as my two favorites off the bat. I, there's a lot of people else I love in this cast, and I would hope they can be longer and succeed, and I will grow to love them as we get our live feeds of them. But Cedric is number nine in my initial power rankings before we get into the actual gameplay this week. Number eight, Tucker. Tucker, to me, seems like he has that type of mindset, and he could find himself in a showmance. He could find himself working in a bro, a bro alliance with somebody like Cam, like Matt. But I feel like his energy is a little bit just too unique that I think he could turn off other house guests if he brings what we saw in interviews into the house a bit. I think he has that same problem Cedric has where his energy is going to go a little bit too high and I think he's going to make a move a little bit too soon that can get him costed early on. Of all the guys at the beginning, I think he's the one most at risk at being an early boot in my opinion. And I do just think that compared to the other men on the cast, I think Tucker kind of falls behind them in a lot of different ways. And that's why he's my number eight ranked player. Number seven for me next is going to be Rubina. Okay. As far as who gave the best interviews entertainment wise for me this, this whole entire day, Rubina was queen. Her impression of Julie Chen was on point. Her relaxed energy throughout the DR was amazing with these question answers. I think Rubina is going to be one of my favorite characters of this season. And I hope that we the level of just interview pizzazz, interview riz we got from her gets carried over into house and creates some really great gameplay and a chance to win this game. I think Rubina has all the, the I think charisma needed to get into a safe spot in this house and last for a long time and i think she's going to deliver gold when it comes to feeds and everything like that i think that if she gets herself in the right place is able to win a couple comps at the right time and makes her way to the final four and final three she may be able to sneak her way into that final two and win but i don't know with the strengths of some of these guys in this cast and how big brother comps usually go towards the mid or end game if she's going to be able to do that but what i will say is she has the charisma to carry herself to be aligned with people that would want to take her to the final two and that's why i have her up at number seven i love rubina in her pre-interview stuff she's the person that popped out the most to me as somebody who's like i want to watch them on live feeds when they come because i think she's going to be live feed just tv glory overall at number six i have chelsea chelsea is somebody who i don't know if i'll agree with her as a person outside the house but a lot of her answers in her interviews to me struck me as an individual who will do well in this game and will find herself into a comfortable position won't be afraid to make moves early on and get herself in a comfortable position and will align what i think with the right people to make her go further and not upset the house overall i think chelsea just as a nonprofit worker, if she gets near the end, it's going to be a, a very easy pitch on why she should win. I think she's going to make good connections in the house, and I think she's somebody who's going to have a good social game that will get her to the final six and final seven of this season. I don't know. That's just the vibe I got from Chelsea. I got very good vibes from her. I did put her a little bit down below, you know, below other people because I do think other people, as I watched their interviews when they came out later, struck me as better overall. But I, I think Chelsea has a good chance at winning this game, and I think she can go pretty far. This brings us to our top five, though. At number five, I am going for Quinn. 
Quinn, I think, is the biggest underdog in this whole game. He clearly knows live feeds. He mentioned in the Big Brother short thing that he's going to give for live feeds. He is somebody who I think had really great answers, and I think is somebody who can match different levels of people very well, and I think he can hide himself a lot better. To me, he feels like a Corey Wurtenberger game bot wise with the maturity, with the emotional maturity, and the just maturity in general of an older player that can succeed in this game a little bit better and have a more level head and know when to strike it and when to attack. If Quinn is able to get a good core alliance going, I can see him steamrolling this game in all opinion because I think he has that likable personality. I think he understands this game very much and he knows how to, when to get things rolling, how to get things moving. My only worry in why he's number five in this, this ranking is just because... I worry about his end game comp ability against other guys. Maybe if he gets it, if he gets a good alliance going and he can get the strong guys out early, I think Quinn has a very good shot at opening this game up for him and a lot of other people. But if he gets stuck there with some of these other guys that will rank ahead of him that I think have a good chance to be there at the end, I worry that he will get comped out around the final five, final six type situation and will find himself out but as far as somebody who to watch for on live feeds he mentioned he's gonna be talking to live feeds he understands this is very important to the entertainment and he likes big brother so i think quinn is somebody to watch out for here at number five and i think he's probably the player that people might not suspect be as good as he was when you first looked at this cast number four mckenzie mckenzie i feel has this 22 year old charm to her that will link her up to with a couple of strong guys and maybe help her get her way towards the end where she can actually have some end game comp viability you know her being looking like maybe a little bit more athletic um just coming out of college you know still kind of young um i loved her intelligent answers per se and how she wants to get inside the house and snuggle herself in i very much can see her getting into a showmance like leia maybe with the matt tucker cam somebody like that we'll have to see maybe a cedric you know both the younger you know house guests but i think she has a little bit more smart to her and that's what my impression i got from Mackenzie in these interviews and why she's ranked so high i think she's going to be able to have a little bit more game knowledge and hide herself in compared to people like Leia. Um, and I think she'll be able to maneuver herself that if she gets towards the end game, she's somebody who can easily sneak into the final two. And I think w with her charm and stuff, and if, if she has a good social game, could win a final two very well. And that's that's kind of my personal choice and why I think Mackenzie has a real shot at this game and why she's ranked so highly for me off the bat. Number three, I think, is the most interesting character when it comes to their accent, when it comes to just their life story, and that's Decor. Decor is, I think, an underrated individual if you just looked at the basic biography. But hearing how she talks, understanding that she's a self-made woman, and you know, with her life, her ability, I think, to connect to older individuals with her crochet work and her job in there, I think, is going to work very well. I think she's going to have a very good in with older house guests and younger house guests. I think she's going to be somebody who is just very likable as an individual. I mean, just for me today, I was connecting with all of her, you know, press interview, you know, type stuff. And just her camera work and how she was talking, I think Decor has a very level head and mind on her, and she's going to work her way into this game very hard. And I can see her becoming a mid-late game mastermind that is able to propel her game to the end to where she gets to the you know to win. And I think she's the type of person if she gets to the end, she's going to be giving a very good end of the you know final two jury speeches and very good I think with with. Um, goodbye messages and I think she's going to understand the game and just understand how to get people on her side when she either gets them evicted or not. I'm very high on decor. I would not be ashamed to be putting money on her as being a winner if that was an option for me. She's one of my top three picks here to win the season and she's my third and highest ranked female this season when it comes to my initial power rankings. I will probably have egg on my face if she goes early but I think decor is the premier woman in this season to go and win this game. And I think she's excellent casting by CBS and probably the best casting of this season, if you ask me. Number two is going to be Cam. 
Cam doesn't know the game very much, and that's why he's the number two and not number one. But man, did he have charisma. Man, did he have energy where it's like, I want to work with him. I want to be a part of him. I want to be a part of his group, and I trust him. Him saying he wants to work with some of the older people off the bat. If he wins the first HOH, you know, he's somebody who might be able more willing to take out some of his younger athletic competitors early, which generally, you know, can help, gen you know, a guy get to the end if he finds that type of way. I do think I can see him working the final two deal or working closely with other guys like Matt, you know, or even Cedric in different ways. And I think he's going to be right there working with a lot of just in people in the house being loyal to them. He's going to be a central, I think, comfort figure to people. And I just see him growing into this role as he learns the game and moving forward as somebody who people will just trust and want to be around. He's the type of person I think gets to the end because people think, well, we'll take him out at a certain point, and then by the time you say you're going to take him out, it's too late. He's winning these endgame comps, he's likable, and he's just going to work his way to the end. I think he could go on veto comps at the end. I think his athletic, you know, athletic background with Penn State being the next athlete, and just overall his interviews and charisma has him very high for me. I'm very big on Cam, and I would not be surprised come October if we see him be our big brother 26 winner. But finally, the person that impressed me the most is Matt. Matt gave some great interview answers, great interview questions. He's talked about how he wants to target the super fans early, which is something I think because it's, this house is very, I think, recruit heavy, not super fan heavy. A lot of the house will get up on and be a part of. I think he'll be able to link up very well with a Cam early on, a Tucker early on, develop that favorite it or not, young guy alliance that can definitely run through the house towards the mid and end game. I think he has just a level head on his mind. I think he's going to be able to connect to some of the older individuals like an Angela or a Kenny if they survive longer. I think he's going to be able to work and have ends with potentially some of the women as well like Mackenzie and Leia. Maybe Showmance is happening there if that's an option for him. And I think he's going to, you know, he just seems like the most person who understands Big Brother has the athletics has the charm and looks that will get people on his side, as well as just the overall just package. If I'm going to make a pick here today on my first power rankings, who I think is going to win Big Brother, it is going to be Matt. Matt is my winner pick this season, and we'll see how good this is as the season rolls on. And I just got to say, I was pretty impressed with this cast. I know there's some recruits there, but I can see some people getting messy. I can see some good feeds coming our way. And I can see individuals who aren't going to be all down for a dominant young person Broe alliance off the bat. I think people like Cam and Matt are going to work with some of the older individuals early on. Maybe get some power in there and take out maybe some of the younger individuals that I have ranked a little bit higher right now. And it's just going to be a fun season to see how this cast work together. And we have a potential 17th house guest, which I think Big Brother wouldn't be hinting a 17th house guest unless they knew this person was popular enough that they can get them in with the house guest voting. Or if it'll end up being something like Big Brother 14, where you only need one house guest to say to bring the, four, you know, the 17th house guest in, and they'll join. They'll make sure the 17th person gets into the house, and we'll have them on the rankings for week one whenever that comes. But yeah. Outside of that, we had live feeds talked about the fact that there might not be any rewind or, or memory function this season. I will do my best with live feeds to cover them as honestly and truthfully as I can with my live feed updates. But I definitely hope with our live watch longs we have here, we can have a crew and chat in the channel and you can like us, you know, with liking and subscribing, we can catch all the action we need to. Those will be mostly on Wednesday afternoons, Saturdays and Sundays, and then probably Thursday evenings after work and maybe even Friday evenings after work. Again, I, will, I this is a movie review channel, so there will be movie reviews coming out here and there'll be some Thursdays or whatever. I'll be a little bit late to those depending on when they're at. But yeah, I'm excited for Big Brother 26. Tell me your power rankings down below. Say, Tell me what I got right and what I got wrong. And let's just look forward to having the feeds come back Thursday here at... 10 p.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. my time, 1 a.m. East Coast. And I also will be live on Wednesday for at whenever it starts at 9 p.m. Eastern time for the first episode. I'll be live reacting to that episode here. So, yeah, let's just go, Big Brother, and let's have a good time. But until then, I will see you later. And, yes, 
Let's get Big Brother 26 going on the road.